The monthly job numbers may not suggest it, but CEOs want to be hiring. The problem is they can't, or at least they can't justify it, whether it's because of the economy or perhaps concerns over taxes, maybe regulation. Well, here this morning to help us understand what it will take for big companies to start hiring and whether President Obama has any chance of kickstarting a trend with his speech tomorrow is Michael Morris, the CEO of American Electric Power. We'd also like to welcome Jim Kessler, co-founder and vice president for policy at the Democratic think tank Third Way with us from Washington, D.C. Michael, I'd like to start with you, if you don't mind, uh, with this question. We'll get to the president in a moment. But what is, in your mind, the biggest obstacle for CEOs? And, 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 and I want to ask your opinion, not just as the CEO of American Electric Power, but you also sit on the business roundtable. Is it the economy? Is it a question of demand or are they more industry specific issues like say taxes or regulation well so let me take it at the broadest level with a kind of a BRT view when I speak to my colleagues there and I see the same thing at National Association of Manufacturers I think we're all concerned about not knowing the cost of a new employee we have no idea what the ultimate cost of the health care plans will be it's impossible to know where workers comp is going to go, where NLRB is going to go. When you look at a tax like on companies as great as Boeing and that with their facility in South Carolina, there has been a never ending uh, onslaught of new regulations, new requirements. I think I sit on the board at the Hartford. We're not sure how Dodd-Frank intervenes and, and affects the insurance business, the investment business. I, I'm sure that uh, your colleagues here in the New York banking systems are all worried about the implications of that. You know, Jamie Dimon said some time ago to Bernanke, have any of you looked at the 300 regulations coming our way in the totality of them? When I look at my own industry, and you're talking about the, those of us who electrify the economy of the United States, we say to ourselves, there are so many things coming out of the Environmental Protection Agency, and no one's looked at them in their totality and the impact that they'll have on the cost of electricity, which is a jobs killer if residential rates go up, uh, homeowners have less money to spend in the marketplace because they are going to cool their homes, they're going to heat their homes, they are going to watch Bloomberg and other programs, that's a, that's a given. We see that in the commercial marketplace in particular, a lot of folks who can't borrow money are no longer in business. If you and I owned a Walmart store, excuse me, a Hallmark store, in the fourth quarter of every year, we need to take our credit line down by maybe $50,000 to stock up for the biggest months we have. Is this time worse, though, Mike, than any other time? You've been in business for a long mm -hmm. time. You've had leadership positions for a long time. Sure. What about this list of uncertainties makes it so bad? I, I think it is that totality of uh, the unknown of what's going on. But, but you ask a very important question. I would argue that coming out of uh, the break of the Carter incredible cycle of inflation, and stagnation. Uh, there we lost jobs that never are going to come back. I would believe today that if and when we get some clear message of what Washington intends to do to all of us, we are prepared to hire. A lot of us are ready to hire to bring more people back to the workforce. We are still facing my generation's retirement age coming uh, very rapidly and we're all trying to age our group down some by hiring folks. Michael, I'd like to get Jim Kessler into the conversation sure. right now. Jim, Jim, we've talked uh, many times uh, about some of these issues. You've heard Michael Morris. Are you sympathetic to what CEOs face, this uncertain cost of hiring? Uh, clearly, if the economy were stronger, some of these decisions would be easier. Uh, so I want to know what you think. I'm half sympathetic because I do agree that when you have when you're coming out of a recession, and this was a brutal recession, when there's uncertainty on the downside, you weigh it more heavily than if there's, you know, if it's during good times, the uncertainty on the, on the good times. And I also think there's other uncertainty. There's the European debt crisis and what, whether the contagion is going to come over here. Um, but I also think this, like, of, of course, I'm, I'm sure there are some regulations that really should be cleaned out. Um, but, for example, one of the, what, what Mr. Norris uh, uh, brought up was, for example, the health care costs. I mean, look, I run a business, too. The health care plan is going to have absolutely no effect on the health care costs of my employees. I mean, if, if you're a business that doesn't currently provide health care, it'll have an effect. But if you're a typical business that does provide health care, the impact is going to be minimal. So I think that there might, there's some talk that these regulations are creating some uncertainty, but I, I'm not really sure if, 
it, it's that way in reality with some of them. I think they're, they're being overblown. But, I, you know, I'm Jim. halfway sympathetic. There is uncertainty. And, Jim, we want to go back to you in D.C. We were just speaking, actually, during the break with Mr. Morris about some of these uncertainties. We talked about health care. What about for smaller and medium-sized companies, which many point out have really been the growth engine of the American economy, at least compared to some of the bigger traditional companies, and they do actually face a lot of uncertainty. Mr. Morris, not so much. Obviously, it's a huge company. He's required by law to provide health care, but that's not true for a lot of small and medium-sized businesses. How can this be cleared up? I think for small businesses and businesses starting out, I think one of their biggest problems is finding credit and getting loan and finding capital and venture capital and to be able to expand. Um, and I'm sure there's regulatory hurdles. I think in the net for small business, health care probably is a net positive for, for small business. I don't, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's a net negative. If it is, I think it's a, a very small one. I think there are bigger factors that are going on in the economy right now, some bigger uncertainty. I think, I think the fiasco we had with the debt crisis froze a lot of people. That was real uncertainty. I think that we have a Washington that's kind of dysfunctional, and they don't know what, what you know, Congress is going to be able to accomplish. I think that that's hurting folks, and I think Europe's a big problem, and housing is still a big drag. Those are, I think, kind of the biggest factors that are going on right now. That are keeping a lot, that having a lot of people saying, like, maybe I should wait before I hire, because I think there's a lot of uncertainty there. And regulations is one of them for sure. I think there's no question when you look at this, Jim, particularly, and when we look at our commercial customers at smaller, you know, maybe four or five, eight, ten, twelve employees, twenty employees. For years, they either have or haven't had health care costs. Now they're going to have them, and there's no way to know what those are. And, and as you know. Uh, the minute you provide health care coverage, uh, you could have a catastrophic effect on one of your employees' unknowable cost to manage your way through that. And, and I'm already having trouble getting capital uh, from, the, from the financial institution that we talked about a moment or two ago and you just mentioned. Now you're looking at putting more money into the game, which comes right out of your pocket when you own that small business. So we're not talking about American Electric Power or other companies, even though that uncertainty hangs over our head as well. Uh, these are real issues. I, if, I, if I own the local pizza chain, I could care less about what's going on in Europe. I may be concerned, but at the end of the day, what I'm worried about is where am I going to get the capital, how am I going to compete for employees, and will I be in business next week? Uh, yesterday, a number of us in the utility business were spending time talking about load and demand this year. Take away the weather, which we always do. Almost everyone from Florida to uh, Washington State, from New York uh, down to California said their commercial marketplace is very flat to down, meaning that we've lost a lot of very small businesses, the engine of growth for a number of years in this country. Michael, the president speaks tomorrow night. He's going to be delivering a speech on jobs. We know it's going to involve discussion of infrastructure, but tone is as important as the substance of his speech. If you were writing the speech for President Obama, what would be your first line? So my first line would be, I've listened to uh, the hirers, the job creators in America, and they're all asking me to, to take a bit of a time break on some of the implementation of the regulations that are going on that are affecting businesses all across this country. In our space, if he said something about the same thing in the environmental business, we'd be as happy as we'd be. Don't change the rules, change the timelines. Give us a chance to adjust to those requirements, because we all think clean air is a good way to go. Jim? Script me for me the first line of the president's speech tomorrow night. How can he set the tone for the nation? America used to stand atop the metal stand in the world economy. We're going to get to the gold again. We're going to get there inch by inch, and this is how we're going to do it. All right. And then Jim Kessler. Jim, great to see you this morning. Jim Kessler, co-founder, vice Thank president you. of policy at Third Way Democratic Think Tank. We welcome Michael Morris, the CEO of American Electric Power. Gentlemen, look forward to having you both back on the inside.